Uh, I think this might be a marriage made in heaven with our next guest based on his background and what you do here. Oh, yeah. For a living. You, you, you did for real what I write about and make up, so... Yes. Cool. Yeah. Keith Lowry from Jefferson County Community Ministries, whose background is interesting. I, I was going to say before going farther, what John was saying, what Keith used to do, not what he does right That's now. That's true. He used to do. <laughs> yes. What the ministries part is not doesn't make itself into my books very often. So yeah, but it does. See. It does work with your mysteries. It does. That you do we right can change there. that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Everything's negotiable. Uh, Keith, I think we had you in studio about six months ago or so. Yes, we did. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are you guys doing a golf tournament this year? Um, no, we're not. All right. Well, if you do, let me know. We'll help help you publicize it. Aye, aye. All right. So uh, let's talk about Jefferson County Community Ministries and, and some of the things that you do and uh, where the tentacles go, so to speak, sir. Uh, thank you for having me, Bill, John. Bob, thank, thank you very you. much for having mm-hmm. Rob. Excuse me, okay. for having me here. Um, <laughs> I messed up my liner at the beginning and <laughs> threw off all the karma in the room. <laughs> um, Jefferson County Community Ministries is a wonderful organization that sponsors uh, helping the homeless and preventing homelessness. We have three goals. We look at pr- getting people to become self-sufficient. The second thing is we empower them to be able to answer their own permanent solutions and create their own way forward. And the last thing, we prevent homelessness. Mm-hmm. Um, we have over 150 volunteers that help us do that. And we serve right now about 4,000, 4,200 people a year come through our door. And we're serving about 2,000 families. And we're, we're excited because this is our 40th year. Um, so we're having a big 40th anniversary gala celebration on May 13th. Mm-hmm. Um, the purpose of that is to raise money for an endowment, uh, that the endowment can grow over the years and become um, what we need to have fund the operation on a day-to-day basis. But we were also just given 1.3 acres of property by the city of Ranson. And we're now in the process of uh, fundraising uh, for a capital campaign to be able to build a new facility that will include a permanent shelter for those who are adults in need of emergency shelter, as well as families who need emergency shelter. And that currently doesn't exist in Jefferson County. How many bedrooms or rooms are you hoping to have? Well, we currently in the plans uh, can house up to 40, uh, 20 women, 20 men in the adult emergency shelter. Mm -hmm. But we're also looking to house six families in an emergency situation. And how can people contribute? Well, if you go to JCCM, that's uh, .us, that's our website, um, and there's a 40th anniversary button to click on or a donate button to click on, um, and it'll lead you to wherever you want to go. But Saturday, May 13th is our big push right now. We're looking for people to come support us. Uh, come listen. We are actually have a big program in, pl- in play. Uh, we have Landau Murphy Jr. is going to be our oh. main entertainer. Um, we also have a, a local group called Liquid A, who's going to be our dance and cover band. Uh, we have a, uh, a gentleman by the name of Pastor Will Cravens, who's going to be our lead speaker. Uh, and Will has been a person who, once he graduated from college, had realized that one of his friends had become homeless. And I don't know the story exactly. But he spent over a year trying to find him and actually dove into the homeless community to figure out where he was so he could help rescue him. And he's going to be our main speaker, uh, and he's going to present um, some really exciting stories and and facts about the homeless population and how we can best help them. Keith, I'm thinking about 30 years ago, homelessness became a problem that was on the tips of everybody's tongue for the first time. And then it kind of went away. We didn't talk about it too much. And then since COVID, it's burst with the energy of an exploding star and it doesn't matter where you go now you can't avoid the problem it is everywhere and it is it is uh, affecting people who otherwise may never have been affected by it before and now homelessness which we used to think of just before as well those are just the addicts and the crazy right that's how everybody thought about it 35 40 years ago when it first burst into the public consciousness but we don't regard it as that anymore. It's everybody. 
It's interesting because many people that we deal with are homeless simply because things that were beyond their control affected them. So, for instance, in Jefferson County, property prices and rental prices have gone, you know, through the roof. And so there are people who come to us and say, I can't afford to rent anymore. And so we, when I say preventing homelessness, we help people navigate through that, figure out where they can live, what they can afford, and then work with landlords to help them work through that issue. Uh, as an example, do you remember there was a big fire called Mallard Court Fire in uh, Charlestown? There were 10 or 11 families that were all displaced at once. Over half of them came to us to get for assistance to move into more permanent facilities while their, their apartments were being rebuilt. So we're heavily involved in that. And yes, COVID brought a lot of it to light, uh, but it's been around for a long time mm-hmm. in, a, in, a, in a past life long, long ago. Uh, I was a police officer and detective in San Jose, California, and the homeless population had just begun to burst on the scene at that point. And it's interesting at how we do things a tad bit differently than just handing out things. We actually challenge people to come and help themselves. And we then provide the foundation for them to help themselves, as opposed to just handing things out. Um, and I think that's a more successful uh, story and, and line than it is just to go out and, and hand people food. We'll always give people food, but we'll also ask them to come in and, and help themselves, and we'll teach them to help themselves and provide them the foundation that they need to get back on their feet. Bill. Yeah, Rob, I would like to agree with you, but I don't think I can about the stereotype of what we view as homeless to be. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure we've made that transformation for, uh, that we view them as unique individuals. We tend to think of them as a drug addicts and the like, uh, which is very unfortunate. I had a colleague who was actually head of know at one time, uh, a very polished individual, a very effective lawyer, fell on circumstances beyond his control. And he was homeless for about six months or so. So it can happen to a broad reach of people. But unfortunately, we I don't think we have started ex- looking at them as individuals. We still go back to that old stereotype. A uh, couple of questions, if I may. Uh, uh, are you uh, uh, aligned with any particular church, or is it a uh, uh, multi-denominational it's non-denominational. In fact, we have over 37 churches and faith-based groups that support our endeavors. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and together, we're able to put a lot more effort and uh, success on the street than if it just one individual church is doing it. Certainly. Now, uh, and you mentioned some of the needs in Jefferson County, and Berkeley County still has uh, still has needs in these same arenas, but we have made quite a bit of progress, such as the rescue mission and uh, and some of our, uh, our drug addiction programs. Do you, do you work at all with the Jefferson with the Berkeley County facilities? And we do. You, do. And do you share? Uh, in can someone from Jefferson County actually go to the Berkeley County Rescue Mission? We do. And in fact, the, the Rescue Mission is one of our biggest partners. Great. Um, okay. We supply them with food. They supply us with food. When there's, there's emergencies coming up, we work hand in glove together. Um, and we actually have over 71 different partners. The Rescue Mission is just one of them. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, the fact that you're working together, as you should, is very comforting. We tend to uh, go into silos, and we, we grow an artificial line between one county and another county. But you, you folks are not doing that. That's great. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. And, in fact, we get calls occasionally from uh, Berkeley County Schools. Um, mm-hmm. uh, just a few months ago, we got a call from the superintendent of the schools and said, we have this uh, – student that we just discovered is living in a car. Could you help us? Mm-hmm. And so we said, of course. Um, so we took them in. We made sure that they that, that the student and their parent had uh, the facilities that they needed, got them back on their feet. John Gilstrap. Do you have an idea of the magnitude of the problem in Eastern Panhandle? How many people are we talking about? You know, there's an annual uh, count that is that is done, and I haven't seen this year's annual count, but I'm the only hard statistic I have is that we're helping over 4,200 people a year. Um, 4,200 unique people? Uh, or? That's about 2,000, 2,500 unique people. Wow. So when you talk about relocating to more permanent, I, f- I forget the phrase, you've used it a couple of times, more permanent situation mm-hmm. or something, what does that mean? 
So if somebody comes to us, um, let's go back to the Mallard Court fire just mm-hmm. for a second. Uh, we had four, five or six families that came to us. They had a good situation that they were in, but because their house burned down, uh, they didn't have enough savings to go off and put down another security deposit. So they came to us and we called our partners and said, we need X amount of dollars for a security deposit. Can you give us a third? Can you give us a third? And so our partners chipped in uh, to make sure they had their security deposit so they could move into the new facility that they had found. Or another instance, um, somebody came to us and said, we don't have the security deposit, but we called the landlord and said, why don't you work with us? Let him pay on a monthly basis for the security deposit. We'll pay half, and why don't you let them pay the other half on monthly installments? So in this case, we're not even talking about the indigent. We're talking about people who have have income. They just don't have the ability to launch into into a lease. They don't have the deposits or, Correct. or whatever. Or somebody will come in and say both breadwinners lost their job, like, like what yeah, you just said. Exactly. Circumstances yeah. beyond their control. So they come to us and say, uh, we don't have any place to go. Can you help us? So there was one in particular family that came in and uh, we got him into uh, some temporary housing, got him some food, some clothing, uh, allowed them time to relax and focus they both got jobs. They left, and now they're they're one of our biggest supporters. Keith, there's a uh, there's several homeless camps in Berkeley County. I assume you have them in Jefferson County as yes, well, in yes, all the county. Are. What percent of the folks in these camps are you able to provide some assistance to? Well, let me ask. Let me answer it this way: Those people who are interested in receiving assistance, we mm-hmm. can help. In my office, I've got three pictures. One of those pictures is uh, Christ with a sheep over his shoulder, indicating we'll always leave the 99 to go help them. The other one is Christ in a garden knocking on a door, but it doesn't have a door handle. What it means is you have to open the door to let us in. We can't force our way in. So there are people who come to us that say, uh, I want a house, I want a car, I want, I want. And we say, well, we can't do all that, but we can do this. And they say, no, I want it all or I don't want anything. Well, okay, you've made your choice. I can't help you then. Okay. Uh, so Is those, that you, common, Keith? It's not common, but it does happen. <laughs> you mentioned three pictures. You've only described two. What's uh, the third picture? The other one is that we do everything with shepherding and encouragement. So the other picture is Christ walking along a beach with his arm over the shoulder of okay. a person, showing that we're helping but we're not doing for them. We're encouraging them to help themselves. All three stories that we're very familiar with. Yes. Yeah. Bill, Bill was hoping it was a picture of him and his admiral's cap on <laughs> aboard the, the ice cutter. Go, uh, ice breaker. <laughs> ice breaker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Keith Lowry is our guest here from Jefferson County Community Ministries, and you've got an event coming up very soon, and uh, it celebrates 40 years of the, uh, of the help that you've been doing in the community. Yes, um, 40 years. Saturday, May 13th. Uh, it's going to be at the Ranson Civic Center. Uh, it'll be from 6 p.m. till uh, 10 30 or so. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Serving dinner? Serving dinner. What are you serving? Food. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know the menu yet. That's okay. You asked that. For, you asked that, Rob. <laughs> I was getting hungry this time of the, this, this time now, of the morning. Uh, where do you get your food? Um, we actually are having a catering company coming in. And, and the reason I say food yeah, is because yeah. I don't know That's the okay. menu yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. No, I was thinking, do you, get, uh, do you get food from food banks such as the West Virginia Food Bank? We get food from lots of different organizations. Mm-hmm. We get mm-hmm. food from the food bank. We get a lot of food from churches who yeah. donate food. We get tr- uh, food from grocery stores locally. Giant Foods, uh, Martin's uh, Food Line are huge supporters. Um, we get food from lots of different organizations, private organizations. I just got a call from um, the racetrack saying, hey, we're having a food drive. What are your needs? So it's just lots of people in the organization come, or in the community come up and say, what, how can we help you? Uh, we're getting comments on our Facebook page about what a great service you provide. So. Oh, well, thank you, whoever made those comments. Keith, let's talk about how many Keith Lowry's it takes to do the work that you do in Jefferson County. Wow. Um, well, there's one of me, and that's all there is. I hope so. Uh, but there are... Artificial intelligence. <laughs> there could be many of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are 14 employees at our organization, seven full-time, six part-time. Uh, and that, plus the 150 volunteers, is what allows us to serve all of those people. That's an amazing number of people who care. It is. You know, it occurs to me there's, there's a... 
messaging disconnect here because I am one, I'll, I'll say it right up front, when I think of the homeless, I do not think of the person who just lost his job and is having a hard time making ends meet. I think of the the folks on the corner with the signs and, and obviously with addiction problems and, and such. And I'm sure, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sure that is a, I don't know how significant, but that is certainly part of Kamala Harris's Venn diagrams, right, of that represent the, the, the homeless problem. Uh, but the the other sort of, I don't, I don't know what, there's, I can't come up with the term, it's not going to sound insulting, but the folks who have fallen into homelessness through not addiction and not, you know, through natural circumstances, that's not what I think of, and by extrapolation, I'm going to assume that's not what most people think of in terms of homeless. And it's easy to ignore and push aside those who have the addiction issues and such, not that that's not a, a different problem. I don't know how you how do we make people more aware of the benign homelessness if that's the right term so in my experience there are basically and i don't like to over categorize or generalize mm -hmm. but there are four basic broad groups uh, of people who are homeless those who are homeless because of things out of their control uh, natural disasters unemployment covid where lots of people were laid off uh, and then businesses failed there are those who are addicted, uh, and that causes homelessness. Then there are those who have mental issues that, because of whatever is in their mind or in their life, uh, their circumstances have driven them to homelessness. And then there are those who choose to be homeless because it's easier for them to say, I'm homeless, um, and they just like the lifestyle. There's a, there's a gentleman that I work with on a regular basis. He's a nice guy. But he says, I just prefer to be this way because I have no bills, I have no schedule, I can go and do what I want to do, where I want to do it, and uh, that's his life. And picking up on that, that's very interesting. Uh, you provide support, you provide food, you provide uh, places for them to live. Do you provide any treatment at all? And if you do, how do you differentiate between these four different populations? So we actually have a really good four Tier four, four-tiered uh, program for helping people. We have case managers who will look at people for long-term issues and say, what are the things that you need that we can help you build in your life so that you can become self-reliant and get the permanent solutions established for yourself? Then we have our biggest partnership is with West Virginia University Medicine. Once a week, they send a doctor to our facility and they see about 300 clients a year, provide their medical care, uh, get them the information they need and prevent them from becoming so sick that they have to go to the emergency room. Um, they just completed an, a study that said, hey, we're, we're saving so much money by not having people go to the ER with colds because we're seeing them at JCCM. Can I interrupt very quickly? What about the medicine? What about the prescriptions? That's up, the, the doctors write the prescriptions, and then if the client does not have the funds for it, then we'll pay for their okay, prescriptions. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Then we have a mental health counselor uh, on contract, and it's a licensed independent cl clinical social worker, and she sees clients to help them through any mental issues that they might have. And then we also have a, uh, psychiatric nurse practitioner PhD who helps with medical management. Um, med cases where people come in because they have lost their medicines or they don't know what medicines to take and she will help them through that process. So those four things are able to help people get back onto their feet. And of the four things that I talked about, uh, it really helps all except for the ones who say, I don't want to leave my homeless status. Keith, we are just about out of time. If you could, one more time, tell people they can get tickets to your event. Tickets to the event. It's the uh, Jefferson County Community Ministries Gala 40th Anniversary. It's going to be Saturday, May 13th. You can get tickets by going to jccm.us. And there's a ticket button for the 40th anniversary. Please come. We'd love to have you there.